<laughs> and we just do it where everybody can see. <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about that part later. So now we're live. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay, while people are coming on, so I want you to teach me some stuff, okay? Really quick. You already taught me this, but just so we can get it on uh, camera. So what? tell me how to say good morning. I know you guys don't say good morning. You have another way. Like, did you sleep well? So how do you say that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to mention that. I'm going to go through that at the end. It's better. It's my interview. Uh, 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 <laughs> it's better through the end. Uh, I'm going to get to do it at the beginning. <laughs> It's better it. through. It. Okay. Yeah, it's better through, through the. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's better uh, at the end. Um. Uh, but in Ubuntu, um, it, we have different uh, uh, things to say during the time, or the uh, during the moment of uh, of uh, of the day. Um, uh-huh. but um, yeah, I'd rather if we mention it at the end. I think I'll be uh, I'll be a little more prepared. <laughs> yes, I'll sir. try to. Uh, you know, yeah, I'll try to see if uh, if I can mention as well from other uh, languages. And as you know, I'm not. I do not speak my language very well. Um, I've been uh, learning a lot, and I had to to do a lot of studying to to work on the book. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, simply because. Um, uh, colonialism in Portugal and Angola was very, very strict, mm. uh, and the family, the the um, I wouldn't say well to do, but the uh, educated, uh, colon- educated. Uh, the, 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 yeah, Western educated uh, um, families like mine avoided teaching their kids because they thought, well, you know, as you know, our parents always think that they're doing the best for us. And uh, uh, many of these of, the, of those families decided not to teach uh, their own languages to the kids because they they wanted to protect them. They thought that uh, it would uh, uh, they, uh, it would be bad for them in the future. Um, so um, yeah, we have we do have that big problem in Angola. Uh, but I was lucky enough to come back to where I'm at now in Portugal, where my parents are, and work with them. I, I know very well that they did it because of uh, because they thought it was the best thing uh, yeah. for the, for for their kids, you know. And it was there were violent moments. Colonialism was just pure violence in every way. Hmm. So on that note, wow. Let's start. I see there's a couple of people here, so we'll we'll start. We'll jump in. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Ife Tayo Ojelade. I'm a licensed psychologist. And I'm the executive director at A Healing Paradigm. Every single Wednesday, I am having conversations with my colleagues across across the gro- globe, and we are focused on Western psychology, Indigenous African spiritual practices, culture, and traditional healing. And one of the things that we know that is really important, I think we'll get in that conversation today, is around language in our tongue, the language that we speak and how we define ourselves. So I am really proud to have one of my colleagues, my brother Kandimba. He is in Portugal right now. And if you just heard him talk, he was talking about colonialism. He is based in Portugal, but he is from Angola. He is from the ethnic group of um, um, Bundu. I'm going to say it right. Don't, don't say anything. Ovi. Ovi. No, <laughs> Ovi Bundu. He is Ovi Bundu, <laughs> but he grew up in a Kim Bundu um, community in Angola. And one of the things that if you're just a student of history, what we know is in terms of the Portuguese, Portuguese were some of the earliest colonizers, um, the earliest practitioners in the transatlantic trade in human beings and were brutal, brutal in terms of the transatlantic trade in human beings and in terms of colonialism. And so for me, this is a really special conversation because as a woman of African descent, 
that is working and doing this work in the United States to be able to connect to my brother who is from Angola, but based in Portugal. And for us to be able to really have this conversation about these connections and his book um, that is focused on an Angolan based names um, and recognizing those connections that even come out of African American language and tongue in our tongue is really important. And so I wanna just really jump into this conversation and I wanna thank each of you for showing up for this conversation. And do me a favor, just share some energy with my brother Kandemba. So if you can just put something in the chat and say hello to him, then I would definitely appreciate that. We see a couple of folks that are uh, jumped in already. So Kandemba, tell me, so you're a writer and you wrote this book and it's in Portuguese now, y'all. So let's just be Portuguese, you can read it. So we're working on him to translate it into English. What made you become a writer? Um, greetings, sister. I'm so glad that you pronounced my name so well. Uh, and, and that you didn't call me a startlist. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to do that. Because um, I knew yeah, that was um, the European part. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a published writer now. Um, I've been, I, I released a book last year. It's a collection of, uh, of, um, Angolan names, uh, of, of, of basically all the Bantu, uh, speaking, uh, uh peoples of the area of Angola. I'm a Bantu um, writer now. Um, yeah. In, I've been, I... Sorry, that was me. Yeah, it's all right. In case, uh, uh, in uh, in case uh, uh, some people I uh, don't know what Bantu means, I will explain basic sure. stuff. Uh, uh, Bantu is a word um, for um, a group of Africans uh, that migrated. I think migrated is the best word to Central or Southern Africa a long time ago. There were several migrations. Um, it is said that uh, uh, these people, uh, this group of people first came from uh, southern Nigeria and Cameroon all the way down. Uh, and then they went from there to the east. So there were several migrations of, uh, of, the, of, of this group of people called Bantu. Bantu comes from a... Um, the word to uh, person or human being. Uh, m uh, many uh, Bantu speaking uh, Africans use the word for to identify a person or human being. And ba is, clu is plural, also in many Bantu languages. Um, um, I would say around 1860s, a, 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 a German uh, linguistic started using identifying all these people as Bantu. So it wasn't us, it was actually the, the Europeans mm. who, who, who use it to identify uh, 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 a group of people or a big family, uh, um, a big linguistic uh, uh, group of people. The word is African, but the way it's used today to identify a group of people is, is European. Interesting. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We can't even wait. Okay, stop. Wait. Okay, so the word two is recognized as human beings. The word ba is a group of people. Yeah, uh, um, two. Once again, two is a, is a, is a, is definitely an African word. Is a is a uh, which uh, means a person or human being. Okay. Sometimes you find it. Sometimes you find it in different languages, such as sometimes you find it pronounced "muntu," "tu muntu," "mutu," but it's usually at the end "nt ntu," which uh, uh, means person or human being. And "ba" is it makes it plural. So human so ba is a, is a, Oh wow! Yeah. So 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 that's why you have. Uh, um, 
for example, Bakongo people. The ba makes it plural. A group um, of Congolese people. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the way it's used today, it's used today to de to 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 identify people. Is it comes from the Europeans? Nobody was saying uh, 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 when uh, these people were migrating to the south. They weren't telling the people that they found, such as the so-called pygmies and the uh, uh, so-called Kosan people. These are the people that were already there mm -hmm. for the Bantu uh, migration. They weren't. They weren't telling them we are Bantu. There was no <laughs> such a thing. But okay, so to us. <laughs> Yeah, no, Bantu was just, uh, it's a word for people. Okay. Human beings, you know, so the, the, the way as, as, uh, 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 we've been using is, 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 is introduced by, by, uh, uh, by Europeans. Um, and uh, yeah, it means, it, it really means a whole bunch of ethnic groups, more than 500 groups. Some people say even more than 500 groups. 500? Yeah. Yeah, the biggest uh, 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 group, basically, of Africans are Bantu uh, speaking people. So we are, uh, so this, this Bantu people, mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't bother too much about it. I work with Bantu culture, but I don't, I have Bantu pride because then I'll be um, separating myself for, for, from a Nigerian or or Sudanese, or, or, or a person from, from Mali or Senegal. They are all Africans like us. They just don't speak Bantu language. It's different. Uh, but I don't, I don't have Bantu pride. You know, I, 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 I work with Bantu culture and stuff like that because it's important to, to, for, for people to know a little more about our culture. But I don't deal too much with this uh, Nilotic and Bantu and all this stuff, all these strange uh, and questionable um, European, uh, um, uh, I would say, terminologies. Okay. Can you call it terminologies? Uh -huh. Can you call yeah. it terminologies? Yeah. Yeah. So my so my work is uh, is has been about um, Afri uh, a Bantu speaking um, people of Africa because that is very. We know very little usually, and the diaspora knows also very little about the, the Bantu speaking societies. Mm -hmm. um, Angola, for example, Americans know about Queen Zinga. Mm -hmm. African Americans would say, but this just just about all they know. Uh -huh. um, it's easier to know more about uh, Nigeria and Ghana and, and, and Kenya uh, because it's also uh, they speak English. And the yeah. words that uh, go straight, you know, so it's much easier for you guys to have that kind of access. But um, yeah, so I'm. I'm so I probably so let me know. ask you something because you just said something I think that's really important. And how you said yeah. her name. So in the U.S., people would say Queen Nzinga, Nzinga, N Z I N G A. So that's how we would say yeah. it. And you taught me something about how her name is correctly said. So can you talk a little just about that really quickly? Um, the thing is that uh, um, she was a uh, the queen of uh, Kimbundu speaking people. Now there's a big argument about it because the the the, the Congo people say that she was a descendant of of the the Kong, of the Congo kingdom. Maybe her father was, maybe a mother or grandpa or, or, or one of the, the of, of her grandparents. Uh, but she was uh, the queen of, uh, of of Matamba and Dongo, those two big uh, Kimbundu speaking queen uh, uh, kingdoms, right next to right next to the 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 the, the, the Bakongo people, and. Um, uh, 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 where, and, 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 and eventually, uh, if she was the queen of uh, the, 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 the Kimbundu speaking people, it, it would be N J I and not N Z I. Uh, that's what the, uh, that's what the, 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 you know, the, the Kimbundu, the Kimbundu historians and people say she was, she was, uh, uh, their queen, uh, 
and her name was Nzinga, and not Nzinga. Still a, a big debate, but uh, the thing is that the word Nzinga uh, also makes a lot of sense, but it is it, 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 it is different than Jinga in Kimbundu. So I I prefer uh, in my book. I would, I'm not even going to say prefer in my book. I do the best to follow um, um, what has been um, not really said, but uh, what, what has been proved the most. Um, also, I do my best to, I work with the, uh, with the institution of uh, Banto languages mm. and they help me a lot to, to, to know uh, how to spell certain uh, uh, words in, in, in the Banto languages of Angola. In my book, you will find uh, NJI, Njinga. Njinga, um, instead of Nzinga, yeah, and, Njinga. Yeah, and Nzinga, in my book, has to do with the Bakongo uh, kingdom, and uh, it is it was a title for a lot of warriors. This is why this is a big thing, because for them it makes a lot of sense. You know, the female warriors? Um, female warriors? Yeah, warriors in general. They all these generals and, 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 and warriors were, uh, uh, received the title uh, Zinga. So it's, uh, it's even the kings, and, uh, uh, some kings uh, were, were, were called Zinga. So that's why uh, a lot of people uh, question but in principle uh for me she is she was uh jinga with a j okay in jinga yeah thank in you jinga. i'll show you the, the the cover of the book yes and so we have what oh, it is. Yeah. It. it's bigger than i thought that's a huge book <laughs> no it's, it's it's not a huge it's, it's it's thick but it's not big look look at my hand it's a pocket book it's you called know, pocket I'm book talking about big but it's thick yeah, it's a thick yeah, book. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's about 400 pages. <laughs> you got yeah, it has what you have in there? Names uh, more than 2,000. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we, we definitely yeah. have to translate it into English. But can you put in the chat? Uh, well, you may not be able to do it now. But if people wanted to get it in Portuguese, and maybe hold the camera using Google Translate. <laughs> You put in chat, so how people could get it? Um, um, no, I'm, tr I'm I'm working on it. I'm translating the book. Uh, it's very important important to me to have the 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 the, the book in English. Yeah, I know there is uh, there are people in America and other countries that are interested to have this book and to know a little more about uh, Angola. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised how much we can learn from from a name mm. of a person, you know? And, and uh, our names are based on our languages. So yeah. once you learn a name, you will learn something as well. Um, and they derive from several uh, aspects, uh, including verbal aspects. Mm -hmm. We talk about this, about this all the time. Huh? Almost yeah. every night we talk about this. <laughs> You're so, always uh, giving me new yeah. names to think about, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, Going back to, to the, uh, the 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 uh, the why am I writing or am I, why am I a writer? Um, it started when I was um, well. I was born in Portugal while my father was in school. Um, the uh, during the colonial years in Angola, the Portuguese did not build uh, universities as a way of controlling the population. So whoever wanted to continue studying had to go to had to come to Europe, to Portugal. So there were no universities built in, in, in Angola, uh, nothing in Mozambique, in Cape Verde, or Guinea-Bissau, San Tomé, all these ex-Portuguese ex colonies, there were no universities. So you had to, if you want to continue study, studying, you had to, uh, to travel to, to Portugal. And then there was a way for them to control all these, uh, the uh, um, so-called intellectual, um, uh, now, I wouldn't say society, but class of people, right? Mm. Um, 
Uh, when I say so-called, you know very well that uh, uh, our intellectuals uh, uh, are not intellectuals because they study the European uh, concepts of, 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 of life, right? We always right. had our own, yeah. Uh, so my father came, my father was studying here and I was born here and we went back to Angola. The family went back to Angola when I was around, uh, before I turned two years old. So I can't remember. I cannot remember anything mm. here. Uh, I only remember there. I only remember there was always somebody to to play with me. Were too many. I think I was. I think no. I think I was the ninth child. So um, yeah, there were a lot of people around. So that's all. That's the only thing I remember when we left <laughs> Portugal to, uh, to Angola. There, there, yeah, it's strange. It was. It was. Uh, it was. I've been talking to my parents about it. It's a big family, big African family, and. Uh, <laughs> A lot of people would just would just stare at us all the time, you know. A lot of people uh, had never seen black people before, and um, even in Portugal, I was admired. Yeah, you know, even when I came back, when we came back in the eighties, there were still people that hadn't seen any black people at all. Uh, that's just so weird, I guess, because when I know I was surprised the first time I went to Portugal and I was in the airport. Well, I've only ever been in the airport in Portugal, and there's black people everywhere working. So I just think I, and yeah, I, was I, and I just assumed it was tons always. Yeah, there, there was, there was uh, uh, in the 80s, uh, uh, people started coming. Got it. Uh, more and more. But during colonialism, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that easy. You would have to go to Lisbon in certain areas of Lisbon. There were students, and so, uh, but um, anyway, so I grew up in uh, in 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 in, uh, in Angola. Mm -hmm. We are from the uh, like you mentioned before. We are uh, of Imbundu from from both parents. It's the biggest ethnic group in Angola. Um, from the highlands, Planalto Central highlands of Angola. And Angola is divided only uh, uh, in, uh, we divide Angola north and south only. Mm. But we are from the center of the country. Um, and um, right after independence, uh, the civil war started. You know, the, all that, uh, all those, uh, uh, all, the, uh, all those uh, um, freedom fighters in Africa, they were, Mm -hmm. Helped by 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 some by uh, by the Americans and others by by the community by the uh, communist uh, society started fighting, right? Uh, and we so we were in Wambo. Wambo is uh, used to be called New Lisbon. It was the the spot for the Europeans, mm -hmm. and um, and we 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 left Wambo to Luanda, and basically I grew up there. Um, and that's where uh, people speak Kimbundu. Rwanda is a is a is a Kimbundu speaking uh, uh, area. Even though uh, uh, um, we have different people from from all over the country, but uh, the the uh, the land be, uh, belongs to the uh, uh, Kimbundu speaking uh, people. Okay. And um, we were there for some time. My father was was. Uh, uh, nominated as the first uh, uh, director of the uh, University of Agustinho Neto, the faculty, uh, the uh, the uh, department of, if I'm not mistaken, economy. He was the first director. Uh -huh. um, I would say, is it dean or is it director? Would it be dean or director? Uh, I, I'm not really sure. It could be dean. Like, it, yeah, dean is like, was he? He was over that whole area. Yeah, he was the man. <laughs> I would oh, say okay, he was so the man. The, the dean. Probably the dean. Yeah, the dean. The first. Yeah, the first one. The first uh, 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 of uh, of the independent uh, Angola. He was Got the first it. in the history. So, okay. yeah. It was nominated okay, so by, uh, by, by you, Kandimba. Fast forward to you. Yeah. How did you become the writer, though? Yeah, the 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 the, the writing comes when. Um, 
So we, 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 we went back to, to Angola, we stayed in a couple of years, and then my father was very uncomfortable with the situation, uh, with the civil war, and even communism, which he did not accept the way uh, uh, things were. And, he, and uh, he mo uh, we moved back to Portugal. Uh, he stayed here for maybe a year or so, and then he moved to, to New York. We stayed here for four, four years and a half, five, then you went, we went to, 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 to stay with him in New York. We went to study. We were young, 14, 15, 16-year-old kids. Mm -hmm. um, and um, while in high school in Manhattan, um, I came across um, Risha Wright's Black Boy. And it blew me, blew me away completely. Uh. Um, that was, uh, he's talking about uh, the 30s and 40s in the south of the States, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. But he was so, I felt so connected to what he was saying. Uh, my experiences were almost the same mm -hmm. when I was a kid growing up in Portugal. And, um, you know, I felt like, well, I didn't know you could put that into a book. I didn't know that we could put our all feelings, all feelings into, you know, into into a book, um, so the the Richard Wright is my first uh, reference as a writer. Um, yeah, I, I was blown away with that book, and then I heard about Native Son. Yes, mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to read the whole book. Uh, I did what people usually don't want you to do. I watched the movie. <laughs> they prefer. Yeah, they prefer. Yeah, I didn't read the book. I came across the movie before the book, but it, the movie blew me away as well. Um, so it was Richard Wright. Uh, I'm that uh, that uh, that uh, that this is the, the reason why I became a writer. And yeah, it's the African American community that 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 was very inspiring to me. I started uh, following other writers. Mm -hmm. I was really excited about. Um, Black people writing their own experiences, uh, and uh, I knew right then I was around. I was about fifteen years old. I knew that I wanted to write uh, about and for black people. So um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Uh, that's what I will always do. Uh, my objective is to write about us mm -hmm. and to and for us. You know, uh, that's my first uh, priority. Um, I started as a uh, poet. No, I didn't um, know that. I had a hard you never told me that part. <laughs> I, I, started, I started as a poet. I started as a poet because uh, it was the easiest thing for me to, to, to write. I had a hard time with English in the beginning. Mm. Um, I knew nothing. I knew nothing about English when I went to the States, when I moved to the States. Um, I, was, I, was, I was learning French here in Portugal. Um, Spanish was very easy because when you speak Portuguese, you eventually learn. You Thanks, Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. We were, yeah, so we were watching uh, in New York, we were watching Telemundo 24 hours a day, and my father started complaining. <laughs> you guys never learned English. You need to stop watching Telemundo. <laughs> Which is its own level, in some ways, of white supremacy that you can get from Telemundo, yeah. too. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it was interesting though. It was it, it was in, it was ninety. It was uh, late eighties, early nineties, and I remember Telemundo and all these uh, Goya commercials all the time. You know the product Goya all the time. It's Goya oh, all the yeah, time, yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. I used um, to play the Panamanian, <laughs> and they always had Telemundo on. Like, so these are Afro Panamanians, and every time I went over there, and so I got a whole like education around Telemundo. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, um, we took. I went to a to a course, an English course, for six months. All my brothers uh, were much better than me because they were already uh, learning English before here in uh, in Portugal before we moved to New York. Um, so I uh, we went to a, a six month intensive course in Manhattan, and then we went to school. It was very hard, I mean, six months, and then the, I, 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 uh, we, were, we were thrown back to, to, to school. Um, 
Yeah, it was. I had a hard time, so I started writing uh, uh, poetry, which I thought it was easier. Uh, um, uh, so my first public uh, publication was a a, a, a poem, um, and then um, things went on. I went to do other things in life. Um, I always I, I've been writing for years, but I, I had never published again. Uh, I never published uh, the, the poetry, uh, my poetry as, as my own book. It was a collection of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of several uh, um, Writers. works by different people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't even have it. I don't know what happened to it, but uh, yeah. it was too long ago. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm a writer eventually because of, uh, People think because of my father, because he was around books all the time. I remember my uh, his, uh, uh, his office in Angola was just was like a library. Mm. Um, but it was I thought it was boring as hell because it was all about philosophy and all this stuff. So I I couldn't myself I couldn't see myself. Yeah. <laughs> so you needed to go to look at some African American literature. That's great. That's a good connection. I love that. I really love that. Yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. I tried to to read his stuff, Marxism yeah. and and all this stuff, but he, I couldn't. You know, he couldn't. It, it didn't work for me. Got um, it. Got it. But yeah, yeah. Um, so I was introduced to 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 literature, basically uh, uh, from and about the African American community when I was younger, and it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because I started um, writing my own experiences. I mean, um, we don't really have uh, books here. Uh, I've been in Portugal for the last, uh, I've been back um, for four years now. Mm -hmm. um, um, from the state, I was in the States for uh, almost 11 years. Uh, lived everywhere, traveled a lot, went to the South. I, I, you don't want to know my story. I've done everything. I travel a lot. I used to be a, a traveling salesman, so there was uh, uh, I had an opportunity of of of, of learning a lot and, and 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 seeing a lot of things. And I went to the south for the first time as a as a um, as a, a traveling salesman, and I was sh I was kind of shocked because I used to uh, you know traveling salesman in a suit knocking people's doors, right? And um, I remember. Um, I, 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 I didn't know anything about uh, poverty in the South. Mm. So that was kind of sh uh, shocking to me. But yeah. it wasn't just about poverty because you also have uh, uh, middle class uh, African Americans uh, and all this stuff. It wasn't just that. Um, what I really wanted to say is that I met this, this, this elder, maybe in his 80s. Uh, with a guitar, and um, we talked a little. I told him that I was from Angola and stuff. Um, he had never met an African before. Um, we talked a little. I was already very. I always ask too many questions. Um, <laughs> and and people in the south, black people from the south, are a little more reserved. Like uh, a lot of uh, African people, when you go to the to villages. Mm. Uh, the ch the children seem to act just like uh, a lot of the African kids. You don't, you don't really just come up to somebody and start asking too many questions, especially if the person is older than you. So the kids mm -hmm. just get oh, yeah, quiet. Um, yeah, this is how we were uh, brought up traditionally. You know, you don't if you're a kid, you don't talk unless you are addressed to. And if there are older people, you don't just get there and start talking. You know, uh, there are ways to do it. Right. Um, and so I, I could relate to a lot of things that I saw. And uh, going back to this, to the elder, I think in his 80s, 80, 80s early 80s, um, and we talked a little, and uh, this, this was South Carolina, somewhere in South Carolina. I say somewhere because it was really, uh, it looked like a plantation to me. Mm. I can't remember which city. Um, we talked a little, he told me a very strange story um, that his, uh, his, his grandmother 
uh, had, had uh, flown to the sky, literally. And he said that he met people that saw her uh, flying to the sky. Um, um, he, had a, he, he sang a song, he had a, a, a guitar, he sang a song called John Harry. John Herrick or John Herrick. He said it was a traditional old song from it. I can't remember. John Something Henry. about John yeah. Herrick. Yeah, John, John Herrick. Herrick. I remember. Mm -hmm. This is it. Yeah, that was it. Um, and I was completely uh, kind of shocked about it. Because um, in New York, we, you get introduced to Africa, but it's just history and a lot of people going after uh, their roots and stuff, but not going, not that way. Not like going to the south and talking to people and, and meeting people and then see what they eat. This was a little different. My experience with African Americans in New York was completely different uh, than the ones I in the south because in the south I felt more I felt closer to Africa, in the sense that people were a little more natural to their culture. Okay, wait a minute, Kadima, you never told me this story. Hold on, hold on, because you just said something that I don't even know if you realize how significant it is. You said that this elder in South Carolina was playing his guitar and he's telling you this story about his grandmother flying. Yeah, to That's Africa, to Africa. Flying, okay. To Africa. Do you, have you read all the stories? You know that that is like a really common theme among African-Americans, right? You, you just have never said this to me. I'm, I'm shocked right now. So there's a lot of stories about that, like... There's a story in Ebo Landing. Have you heard the story of Ebo Landing? Um, so, I don't think so. So there, when you look at, so there was an organization called the WPA. And mm -hmm. it was during 1930s, I think. So the W, uh, the Work Progress Association, I think that's what it was called. They would go around and they would... Um, write all these stories. Uh, they would talk to people that had formerly been enslaved and they write down stories. The WPA has hundreds and hundreds of stories of African Americans talking about their ancestors that had been enslaved, either firsthand mm -hmm. um, eyewitnesses or stories that had been passed down of African people that would one day just stop working. They would be out on a, in a field on a plantation, they would stop working and they would fly away. Story after story after story. Yeah. So one of the bigger stories is the story of Ebo Landing. And Ebo Landing, um, I feel like Georgia, if somebody's listening and they know, then they can um, jump in. Georgia, South Carolina, definitely on the, the coastal sea islands, there's a huge ship that comes in of um, enslaved human beings, predominantly Igbo folks. And in this particular ship of Igbo people, the Igbo folks wasn't having it. They wasn't trying to be enslaved. So there's two different versions of the story in the historical record. What the Europeans that were enslaving them said is that the people fought back, ship sank, and the peop the enslaved people walked back into the water and drowned themselves. What the mm. people of African ancestry, the African Americans that were already here, what they said is that they saw the people fly away. Mm. Different versions of that. Thank you, Dr. Corey um, Claiborne is saying it. It's um, St. Simons in, um, in Georgia. It's an island off the coast of Georgia. And so that's a big story. So it's interesting that you heard that firsthand. So I've read these stories and Dr. Claiborne that's responding. She's a writer also. She, um, so she, she knows this. There are lots of folks that write about these stories, but it's rare to actually interact with somebody that heard the story firsthand. You, so I've read it. You're the first time that I've ever heard anybody say that they heard, they talked to someone that's no. that's that story. Wow. I thought, yeah, and I, I wrote his name down years years ago somewhere. Uh, I have stuff that I left in the states, but I wrote the name down of the person, old man. He was it, to me, it was like a, it was like an old looking plantation, and I went to knock on his door to sell this miracle uh, miracles uh, miracle uh, um, product 
Yeah, that was my thing. And I, I, I met a lot of people doing that. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, New York was different, but also very, very, very important. Um, early 90s, um, a lot of African-Americans looking for their roots. Mm -hmm. And it was the right time to be there. You know, it was the mm -hmm. right time to be there. Um, I met people that took me to to uh, to 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 several events, um, and I joined a a Capoeira Academy. Mm. And through the Capoeira Academy, Academy, I met a lot of uh, um, African Americans. Anyway, um, let me go back to this to this book. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I know, yeah, so we got is, three minutes left, so we got to talk about the book. Like, tell me about the names in the book. The names, the names in the book. Yeah, why is this book important? Well, first of all, it's the first uh, Angolan book that deals with uh, with uh, with uh, names uh, from just about every ethnic group. Hmm. Uh, Bantu-speaking people, as you know, Angola is not just Bantu. We have the so-called Kwasan people that were there before. But uh, I, I, this book is just about uh, the, Bank, the Bantu ethnic groups. Uh, it's the first one. Uh, um, there are several books about uh, uh, um, names, traditional names, but specifically specific about ethnic group, uh, uh, about a certain ethnic group. Mm -hmm. So this is the first one that includes that includes just about all ethnic groups. Huh. Uh, it took it took it took me ten years. That's a labor of love. Ten years, uh, it's a labor of love. I started uh, in, in. I started writing a book in Amsterdam. After New York, I moved uh, to to Holland. Because you was partying, um, huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> partying in Holland. Um, I thought you was partying in Holland because that's what people go there to do. They party. <laughs> everybody thought I, I went there to party and all this. I had locks, and everybody thought this guy is gonna go. Uh, just for the partying and, and to smoke, but actually, um, no. I, I I left the states. I wanted I wanted to I wanted to to try something different. Uh -huh. And uh, since I was born in Portugal, you have uh, uh, you know part of the European community and, and and able to to travel and to move around freely and easily. I said, oh, listen, I'm gonna take a break from the states. Uh, uh, because uh, I needed that break, and I think a lot of Americans as well need that little break. Because <laughs> the stage can be yeah. pretty heavy. Um, so I I, uh, I took a break from the states. I moved back to Portugal um, for like nine months before I went to to to, to Holland. I, I didn't like Portugal at all. Um, in the nine in in nine, uh, 2000, 2001, around two thousand two thousand one. And so I, um, I had a friend in Holland um, uh, who advised me to, to, to visit Holland. And I'll probably, like I said, I was nine months in Portugal. And I said, okay, I'm either going back to, to, to the States or go, uh, I'll go to London because I have some friends there. She said, well, I know you better than, than, than those guys in England. Uh, just come around and, and, and you might like it. And, and people here speak English as well, even though the language is Dutch, they, they speak English. So I knew this person much better. Uh, we were, yeah. Uh, she was a, 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 a student in the same academy in New York, uh -huh. so we knew each other. Got it. Much better. So I said, yeah, why not? I'm just gonna uh, visit her. I'll stay there for some time, and then if I don't like her, I'll just go back. Well, I, I got there. Um, um, I liked it, uh, but then. Uh, people wanted me to teach capoeira, and that's how I stayed. Basically, you know, uh, I, I went to Holland. I opened the first academy of traditional capoeira. Traditional capoeira. I'm the first person to take uh, traditional capoeira, which is called capoeira Angola. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the first. I'm the first. The capoeira Angola exists in Holland because in, I took it. Uh, I took it to to Amsterdam. In 2002, 2003. So uh, now there are people that have been they're playing there, but they're already they were studying with me for like uh, uh, ten years. Or so. so this is interesting because 
I assume that you became a writer because of some connection um, with your dad or, you know, just him being an academic. And I assume that you learned capoeira because you're from Angola. And you learned both of those by interacting in the U.S. Like, well, <laughs> so it's yeah, amazing. yeah, I mean, you learn? yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, like I told you, um, yeah, I was around, I grew up around a lot of books, but I wasn't interested in, 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 in Marxism and Leninism and all this stuff. I, I didn't care for this stuff. And I uh, kind of felt sorry for my father because he had to, to, to read all this stuff for years and years. My father was studying Got for it. too many years. Um, I tried it, but it wasn't me. I wanted to, I wanted art. I wanted arts. I wanted to do something with, with, uh, with, with, uh, with film, with documentary, uh, books, uh, um, uh, talking about our own experiences uh, all over the world as black people. So tell me a couple of names, like pull out some names that um, are in your book that might be interesting to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, would, I would like to start by uh, my name. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind. Um, sure. So anyway, the the book uh, uh, has been written because we Angolans need it very much. Um, uh, um, colonialism, colonialism, as I mentioned before, was very violent in Angola, um, and uh, many a times names were prohibited, not by law, but the ch the uh, the uh, church. Mm -hmm. or the, the uh, religious institutions work, work with, uh, with the uh, colonial governments. Yeah. yeah. So there was no law really saying that you cannot have your own name, but if you had to study, you had to study under a Christian institution. And that's where you usually got your name changed. In my case, um, my grandfather was born in... Uh, my, father, my grandfather was born in 1910. My grandfather was born in 1910. And you know, we're talking about a, 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 a person that still saw uh, a slavery hmm. around that time. So legally, slavery stopped. But as you know, probably better than me, that he, you know, he continued. continued. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it continued, and he he told my father that he still remembers people being kidnapped. Nineteen fifteen, nineteen sixteen. Um. Anyway, uh, my grandfather uh, went to school in nineteen seventeen, around nineteen seventeen, mm -hmm. um, and um, they told him, "Listen, his name his name was uh, Sachingong, and Kandimba was his father. So Kandimba comes from his father." Uh -huh. So it, it would be Sachingong Kandimba in, in, a, in, a, in the uh, Western way, because we didn't, traditionally, we don't carry our last names, as you know. We have names. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are given names. Yes. But uh, so uh, he went, he, he walked uh, into this uh, 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 Catholic institution as Sachingong Kandimba. Uh, and he came out uh, as José Amandio Coelho. Jose, because he was giving a Christian name, um, they had the brilliant idea that uh, Sachingong wasn't a, wasn't a proper name. You know what I mean when I say brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, so they uh, baptized him with, uh, with the name uh, Jose, uh, Jose, 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 Joseph. Uh, Amandio, which also is a Portuguese name, uh, it was uh, his teacher's name. His teacher liked him very much. Oh, you're so cute. You're so smart. Can I? Can I? Can I give him his? Uh, can I give him uh, his name? Uh, my name. He apparently he asked my uh, his father if she could give him his name. I don't know if my my great my great grandfather had the power to say no. I don't know about that. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, for what I hear is that my grandfather. Uh, my great grandfather said that his son, my grandfather, could be baptized with those names, but to not take away his African names. Mm -hmm. Ooh, they, they did it anyway. They did it anyway. So, so, um, so, and then Kandimba. 
So, so my grandfather, uh, uh, instead of Candimba, his, 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 uh, his, his father's name, they translated into Portuguese. So the, the, the young man uh, walks in as Sanchigong Candimba and comes out as Jose Manuque, completely Portuguese name. Um, so the family is Coelho, which means Candimba, yeah, a rabbit. Ah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you don't translate names, as you know. You don't translate names. What's the naming? What's the naming? What's the meaning of the name Nkosi? Just give an example. It's a it's a Congo name. It means mm -hmm. lion. Okay, from now on, your name is lion. No way. No. Because there's a there, yeah, no way. Mm -hmm. So, but that's what happened to my family. Um, uh, legally, uh, my father and his kids are uh, Coelho and not Candimba. Mm. Legally, on paper. Um, uh, but you will find half of the family is Candimba legally and, and the rest is Coelho. Some kept it because they didn't go to, 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 to Catholic institutions. Mm -hmm. See, here's, here's the deal, here's the deal. Uh, we had the Catholics and we had the Protestants, Americans and Canadians. Are you following me? I'm following you. I'm following yeah, you. Yeah, so the, 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 the people that went through the Canadian and, and, and the uh, and American institutions usually kept their last names. So meaning that the Americans and the Canadians allowed us uh, to keep our last allowed. names. <laughs> yeah, allowed us. But it was just, this was just, there was a way to get more people to their church. Got it. You know, it's just a strategy. Okay. But the first name was usually changed, you know. Uh, so we have too many, too many uh, um, European names. Mm -hmm. um, and during colonialism, many of us uh, learned to reject and look down on our names and our identities. Um, if you look down on your language, uh, you eventually look down on your whole culture and your names derived from the languages. Uh, Kandimba is, 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 is Hair is how they say hair. The the the, the, the like rabbit hair. with the bigger, <laughs> yeah. It's Why hair, can, uh, uh, they don't have rabbits there? So it's yeah, hair. yeah, yeah. So they even the translation was was stupid. Um, but it's Kandimba means hair and hair in our why because in our culture and and in many Bantu cultures is uh, is uh, the animal is seen as, as is connected to 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 smartness. Mm -hmm. uh, so calling somebody a newborn Kandimba is calling him a, a very intelligent or, uh -huh. or smart uh, 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 child. So that's where the, the name comes from. That's the origins of the name. And uh, I, started, I started studying a little more um, the names of my, 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 my grandparents and fell in love with them completely. Um, and I said, listen, I got I to gotta, I gotta do something about this. I first started writing something simple just for the family, mm -hmm. for all the names of our grandparents and, and, and looking for the meanings. Some I already knew because mm -hmm. I know the language a little, uh, but most of them had to, to, to call my parents and, and stuff like that. And then I, re and then I had a, a, a good number of, of names. And I, I said, listen, this got to be a little more than just uh, names about my family and or my ethnic group it's got to be about Angola period period and then you um, said it's the 2000 name <laughs> okay yeah i mean uh, I, I wanted I to can, ask you about there yeah. you were saying i think you said the name shaniqua there was a name that african americans use and you asked me was it shaniqua that you asked me about and you said oh that's a bantu name is that what it is yeah i got two things yeah, this is. I got two things that I'm. I'm gonna open the book because uh, I'm getting okay. old and I can't remember everything I got here. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, go ahead. In, yeah, interesting things in this book about uh, connected to African American uh, uh, Africans, Amer African Americans, or the African American community. Interesting things. The whole thing is very important uh, for all Black people uh, and all African Americans because. We know very little about Angola, first of all. And uh, many African-Americans are descendants of people from Angola and the Congo, and they don't know that. So we need to 
um, uh, um, pay a little more attention uh, uh, at that. But anyway, uh, going back to what you, what you just mentioned, I got uh, I got these two names, maybe three. Uh, they might be connected to to the African American community. We talked about this before. We have uh, we have uh, a name uh, Ngombo. It's a Umbundu name. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, derived from uh, um, from Ongombo, and also uh, it's a Kimbundu name derived uh, 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 from the word Kingombo. Um, Ngombo uh, exists in several Bantu languages in Angola, and they have different meanings. Mm -hmm. uh, Ngombo is uh, not in my language, but uh, I think in in uh, Lunda and the Choco uh, people's language. Um, um, ngombo is the ba is the divination basket. That's ngombo. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the the ngombo that I think is related to <clears throat> to um, like this one to to, to like this yeah yeah that's ngombo that's ngombo that's okay. that's a, a let me ngombo. see if I can make yeah. it people can uh, see it okay yeah yeah that's, that's ngombo. Um, the, the ngombo that I have related to the African American community has to do with uh, what you, what we call okra. I'm going to open up here. Okra. Uh, so I want to put a little bit of translation on that. So what our brother Kandimba is saying, we how we would say it with our American accent would be gumbo. So that soup that people make. So he's going to look. Yeah. So. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do my best translation. Uh, so I have it here, Ngombo, N-G-O-M-B-O, Ngombo. Uh, it derives from Ngombo, as I mentioned before, which means, uh, we call it Kiabo as well, which means okra. We, is there another word in the States for, for, for okra? It's just okra, right? Okra, yeah. Just okra. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, as, as a name of a person, uh, it, it comes from uh, why do, would people be called uh, ngombo, okra? It has to do with the um, with uh, with uh, with people that uh, talk too much or might talk a lot on your back. Um, why ngombo? Because it yeah, because it's how okra. This is what okra does to your mouth. You feel kind of. Uh, you, you, we already talked about this. What's the word? That is slimy, okra slimy, and then it's slime. Yeah. Slime. Yeah. So, uh, 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 when you have the name Gombo, or, or better yet, the origins of the name Gombo uh, um, have to do with, with with somebody that can't stop talking, and sometimes talks too much, and uh, or bad talks somebody. That's 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 what it. <laughs> um, that's so hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even know. So no. okay, wait a minute. Let me clarify this. So gumbo, in gumbo is the actual okra, but you can also use that as a name for someone who, and it's usually someone yeah, yeah. who talks a lot or is is gossipy and talks behind people. Goss yeah, gossip. Yeah, but it, uh, do you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it's the way how uh, okra. Um, uh, is is uh, um, it's, it's not really true, but yeah, the way it feels in your mouth, in our mouth. Um, and but not only that, of course, uh, because every name uh, has a story. I mean, you could a person uh, named Gombo could give you this answer, but you could meet somebody else that could say, "Well, our family is called Gombo because mm. we planted, we we planted Gombo for many years, so yeah. the family comes, you know." Yeah, like the fisherman and stuff like that. In English, you find it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was a profession of somebody or, 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 or a group of people. Um, so you said in Gombo, no, it's Ngombo or Kingombo yeah, in Bundu and Kimbo. So Ngombo or Kingombo. And, and, yeah, and then uh, now this connected to the, uh, to, to the African-American community. I, I mentioned that... Um, that is 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 probably uh, connected to the expression okra gumbo. How do you guys pronounce it? Gumbo. Yeah, okra because it's a it's a it's a dish that has 
okra on it. And it, and the, here's the weird thing about it. I don't know if you realize this. That like the gumbo that I make doesn't have okra in it at all. But we still call it gumbo. But there's no. Still call it gumbo. Yeah, it's just uh -huh. it's seafood and chicken, and some people uh -huh. put pork sausage in it. But the gumbo that I grew up with and the gumbo that I make now doesn't have any okra at all. Yeah. Um, the word I'm going to mention is not in the book, but it okay. exists within the African American communities of the South. Uh -huh. It's called jiguba. Jiguba. Uh, jiguba is our word. Jiguba. It's a Bantu word. It's, it's, yeah, it's peanut. It means peanuts jiguba. in our language. <laughs> you told me that but was it is Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, we say, we say Jinguba. Okay. Jinguba. And so actually, and so, um, it's more of an old yeah, go ahead. word for peanuts. Like, you don't hear people, at least I don't. I don't hear people in, like, everyday language use goober now but like when you look at older stuff i was even looking at something um with george washington carver because he was really well known for peanuts and they talk about peanuts being called goober but that's not a, a mm -hmm. common word now yeah that's that that's our word that's a bantu word definitely oh. from the area of angola definitely from the area of angola Got i'm it. looking for the I'm looking for the one you mentioned, the the the, the famous Shaniqua, Shanika, Shaniqua. You know, it's, yeah, one of those. You know, it's funny when you're an African in the states and you hear the name for the first time, you think, oh, where did they get that? It sounds so African. Even so, you might not know that it's an African name, but that's how we usually um, react when we hear names from uh, some names from uh, from the African American community. So Shanika was always one of those names that, uh, that we asked, where did they get that name from? Where did they get the name? Um, so I found out, yeah, I'm not looking for it right now. I found out that we have, you know, the south of, uh, of Angola is populated by several uh, people. And one of the biggest ethnic group there is the Ovambo. The Vambo people are divided, uh, were divided by the, the Portuguese and the Germans. So we, so some are in, in, in southern, of, uh, southern Angola and the others are in Namibia. Those are the ones that the Germans were exterminating. Um, not exactly. Those are a different, as far as I know, there's a different, I know what you mean, but there, it wasn't Novambo. They weren't Novambo. Uh, the genocide was, weren't were in the Ovambo. It was a, 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 a different ethnic group. Okay. Uh, but they were, but they they fought uh, until the 1914s, 19, uh, yeah, 1914s. This they, that was when the Europeans finally took over that area. I mean, they, <laughs> uh, because the uh, Portuguese couldn't do it, and the British and the Germans gave them them an ultimate: if you don't take over, we'll take over. And so the Portuguese attacked from the north, which is southern Angola, and the Germans and the, and the English attacked from the south. And that's how they were able to, to take over the area. Um, but I, um, uh, so going back to the Shaniqua thing. Uh huh, Shaniqua. Uh, the, uh, yeah, we have the Ovimbundu uh, have this name, uh, but it's pronounced Shanika. Shanika. Okay. Shanika. I don't know if you if you if you have that name in the states. Uh, I, I I met I have a friend I'm that so says sure. that she has heard Shanikas. Yeah. Um, sure. And Shanika is is something promised. Something promised. Shanika is something promised. Now what's yeah, the ethnic group again? Promised. Something promised. Something it's promised. The Ovambu what? people. Ovambu, the ones you were just talking yeah, about. The, the biggest group in Namibia and. I'm going to put this question here. So my colleague said when you were talking before, when we were talking about the gumbo, uh, he, yeah. he said this is the same in the Gullah. Have, have you read Africanisms in the Gullah dialect by Lorenzo Dow Turner? I've read so many things, but it was probably more than 20 years ago. So I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, there's another one. I know. Oh gosh, we're out of time. But I want to ask you um, one more. Can I ask you one more? Yeah, if the battery can handle it, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. 
the um booty. I saw you did this whole post on the term booty because we still use that. Like African Americans will talk about a woman's behind and use the word booty. And I saw you had a whole commentary on that. Can you talk a little bit about that? No, but I I, I think uh, that had to do uh, with the uh, with the Brazilian uh, uh, word. I think not really uh, uh, American. No. Oh well, I mean, I saw you saying connected, and I was like, oh, this is the same thing. I had made a comment about it. Mm, I'm trying to re- I'm trying I'm trying to remember because I write so many things. I post so many things. <laughs> you posted it online. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know? No, I, I think I was no 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 no. I was talking about the word bunda. Okay. So I was that, talking about the word bunda. Bunda. And what does I, I think mean? bunda has not to do with booty. I, I don't know. I, I don't see the connection yet. I haven't. I, I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't studied the word bo- uh, booty. I, I don't know anything about it. Uh, but you I was talking about booty. Uh, I don't yeah. see that post because <laughs> I was reading buttons. it. it was, is like, buttons. Is buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bunda is buttons. Uh, Okay. Yeah, you find it in in uh, in uh, in Brazil. You find it in Haiti, in Haiti. Um, mm-hmm. Several other countries use the word. Okay. But it wasn't it wasn't booty. I haven't done anything about the booty yet. Okay, gotta, fine. So then uh, you have me post the stuff yeah. <laughs> Okay. So is there like I know your your battery is about to die, and we are over an yeah, hour now. We can, we can continue. We can continue if I if I turn on the laptop and we can. Continue for like 10 or 15 minutes more. What do you think? We could do it like five more minutes. So you got to give me some quick or like rapid fire ones. <laughs> let me see. Let me give you a second. Let me try to get in. Let me try to connect the laptop so we, that we don't have any. Yeah, we have to. Uh, this is okay. a request now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 okay. Yeah. You yeah, know I, what? I, I would like to. Yeah, go ahead. We can do a whole other thing while you're doing that. Keep keep working on it while you're doing that. I want to do a whole other thing because one time, now I know you because you said this directly to me. You were telling me mm-hmm. about, we were talking um, about, I don't know what we were talking about, but then you were telling me in terms of polygynous relationships in, um, mm-hmm. in Angola. And one of the things that you pointed out, and I was telling you, I have my students read about this, but people don't realize this. But you said that there's... Um, people in Angola, like this one particular ethnic group, where the women are married to more than one man. You remember when we had that conversation? Uh, I think I mentioned that we have a a, a, um, a queen right now mm-hmm. um, that is that has several husbands, but our grandmother also had seven husbands, and a great-grandmother the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what, this, 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 it goes back to, to my request. Um, I would like you uh, to to organize a, a live with uh, some Angolans, okay, English speaking Angolans, of course, so we can talk a little more a little more about our uh, culture and identity, and okay. we can share it with the African with the African American community. Okay, uh, I can invite. I just turn on the computer. For one second. Let me see. I think I'm going to be able to. One second. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Okay. One second. This is. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna add you. So we're gonna do it at the same time. Hello. There. Boom! Technology. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the um, the um, request is for us to 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 do a live with se- with some of uh, other with several Angolan. Uh, Uh oh! Now you're freezing, Kendimba. So the joys of technology. I was able to switch him, but now he's frozen. So perhaps this is the end of our conversation today. 
Well, this has been a good conversation. So I know he's going to ask me. He, Kadeem, but one of the things that he does also is that he is, has been organizing people of African descent in Portugal to do some memorial services around, uh, I, I should say memorial services, but memorial events. There you go. Are you there? Oh, okay, no. Memorial. Oh, he's gone. He'll come back in a second. He, he's he been doing some memorial events around the transatlantic trade in human beings. As I was saying at the beginning, that the Portuguese were heavily involved in the European slave uh, trade in human beings. And it was an ongoing and protract protracted struggle for hundreds and hundreds of years. So not only were they doing stuff on the continent of Africa in terms of enslaving people, but just all across the globe. And so a lot of the work that Kandimba is doing is really trying to help people mark that in Portugal itself. And so he he's really big on trying to expose people of African descent, particularly African-Americans, to the culture of Angolans and to even being able to recognize the presence of people of African ancestry in Portugal. So that was one of the things that he was going to ask me to do. So I'm hoping that's a conversation that definitely we can organize because I know for myself, when I showed up in Portugal for the first time and I saw that there were so many people of African descent that were working in the airport, I was completely shocked at the numbers of people that were there. I did not realize, and I should have realized just because of the impact of Portuguese people around the world on our lives of our ancestors, but I didn't realize it. I think that he's there now. Yay. Okay, you're back. I don't so, know what happened. I don't know what happened. It wasn't my computer. Okay. That's okay. I was just talking about the work that you were doing in terms of the memorial that you were pulling together around the transatlantic training human well, beings in Portugal. So I talked a little bit about that. And yeah, thank I you very much. I forgot. Yes. And then I yeah, was I, a request for having these kind of intercultural dialogues between people of African descent in the U.S. and people from Angola. So, I mean, I definitely would love for us to be able to have that conversation. And even if the folks aren't um, English speakers, then, I mean, we can always, you know, figure out a translator. I so, don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But We've done it um, before, though. We've done it yeah. before. No, yeah, but that's the re that's the request, and this is why I mean we are we are, and now it wasn't enough for us. We have too many things to talk. Um, so um, yeah, the uh, the idea was to, is to is for you guys to, to to organize another live with, and I will invite maybe two more Angolans, um, and so we can talk a little more a little more about our identity as an, as Angolans, um, our history. Uh, we can have a better perception um, of, of things uh, that way, and yeah, to, to have a stronger link with the African American community. And I can always talk about a little more about what you mentioned about my my my, my projects here in uh, in Portugal. I, I am the founder of the uh, the Ancestral Tribute in, in in Portugal, and we started. We did the first one uh, in 2017. Uh, we were planning to do it, uh, the second one this year, but uh, because of uh, uh, the uh, uh, COVID, uh, we, we couldn't do it. But we are planning to do it uh, 2021 around May. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we wanted to 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 to. to I, I wanted to talk a little more about it and the possibilities of, of inviting uh, Af the African American community to come for the for the event next year. Um, uh, I don't know if they, I don't know if, uh, uh, if people knew about it, but uh, Portugal is the door to 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 to, to the uh, to slave to slavery in Europe and the America. So this is Absolutely. the first place. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, recently, recently, I mean, about five years ago, mm -hmm. four or five years ago, uh, they found a cemetery of enslaved Africans in 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 the, in the south of. Uh, of, of the country, Faro, you know, God, I'm sorry, Lagos, he has the same name as, as Lagos, so it's Lagos, the same name, in Algarve in the south. Um, mm -hmm. 150 uh, skeletons of, uh, of uh, enslaved Africans, and you know what they did? 
that is that the garbage no that's a different one than the garbage that no, they have. no there, were, there are no monuments Okay. Uh, um, that have that, that that are linked to our history here in, in in Portugal. There's nothing, 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 nothing. People are talking about it now. There are organizations working on it and stuff like that. Uh, 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 instead of of building a, a monument, which we eventually will show some respect to our ancestors, ancestors, and who and when you show respect to your, to to uh, to ancestors, you show respect to the living people. Right. Instead of building a monument, uh, they built a a a, uh, a golf. Uh, uh, oh, golf. that's what they do here. Yeah, they do the same thing. Same yeah, terrible, mm -hmm. terrible. And we don't know what happened to the skeletons. We don't know what happened to the, to the skeletons. We don't know. We don't know what happened to the skeletons. So that's 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 something that I'll that I'll never forget. And uh, and uh, I I started the uh, the uh, the ancestor tribute because we need something. We need to remind people in this society uh, of what our um, ancestors went through and how much we still suffer from that, you know? Yes. Um, yeah, the first uh, 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 ceremony was great, was wonderful, uh, was right in the center of Lisbon, um, kind of a touristic uh, uh, yeah. area, but it was wonderful. Um, it was something different in this society and we are looking forward to, to, to for the second one. I am definitely looking forward to the time that I can um, come. I want to thank you, my brother Kadimba. Thank you very much. <laughs> Put up your book. Oh, the book. Put up your book again. Uh, <laughs> so it is the the um, book of Angola names, and in the Portuguese he is working on an English translation. I will put in the. The chat, I will put in the link if you happen to speak Portuguese and are interested. Oh, we can talk about the whole and um, the symbol, the symbol. Yeah, it's, it's like a baby, so we can we can talk, but it's Congolese. Okay, so, no, it's it's chocolate. It's chocolate. It's, it's okay, no, no, no. It's no, no. a chocolate symbol. <laughs> symbol. It, it tells it tells it tells the beginning of uh, of, uh, of of life. Uh, wow. Yeah, uh, on top is on top is God. The bottom uh, uh, people or human being. Uh -huh. uh, one side uh, the the moon and the other the sun. So there's, it's a story. It explains how we came to exist. It's a it's a it's a nice story. We'll be able to talk about it the next time. So we're gonna have a, we'll definitely have more conversations. Okay. Yeah. So we can stop this. So again, thank you for coming. So we can end. I'm. And there, there's one thing, and this is not going to be a tra traditional translation. I'm wondering, and this is probably something in Portuguese. So in the U.S., because we're in a time of Corona, you know, mm -hmm. African Americans always take a language and we will make it our own. So in English, people are saying the coronavirus, the COVID-19, what Black people say is the Rona. Is there something... <laughs> That people of African descent say, um, is that you guys have a way of um, calling COVID nineteen there. You got something like that wrong? No, not really. Oh, okay. No, I guess I've been out of touch. I, I don't socialize since since COVID showed up. This is my social network right now. You see, I have conversations with people around the world like this. Yeah, the, the the only the only thing that is is bothering uh, uh, people in this society is is, is 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 the very low numbers of of deaths in in in, in the uh, Portuguese speaking uh, African countries. You know, um, I, I I think it, it, it for a lot of Europeans it's hard to accept that you know um, it's hard for them to accept what's going on. They are dying more than the Africans. You know. Um, it, uh, I'm sure that people are not being tested as much as uh, some countries in Europe, but I mean, this disease, this virus is killing whole families. You can't really hide it forever. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, the only that's thing that. Whole, huh? That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, there's a whole other conversation, but it's the only thing that, 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 uh, that I remember that people have been talking uh, all the time. But uh, thank you again for the invitation. Um, once again, I'm I'm translating the, the book. I'm hoping to have the the, 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 the English version 
out by next year. Uh, I'll be looking for for a publisher. Tell your friends that Candimo will be looking for an American publisher. Um, I'll be looking for an African American publisher. All right. And, well, we know and, um, there's some here. There's some here. Yeah. So. And I'm looking forward to for the for our next uh, uh, debate. The one I requested is uh, still uh, before the end of the year. And because I think it's going to be really, really interested, and it has to be more than an hour. <laughs> yes, sir. It's got to be at least two hours. All right. Black Thank Black. you very much, Issei Ife. No problem. Thank you.